From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Our top stories this week. A new rock drill embraces reduced noise levels. Harmony Gold is about to benefit from its suite of gold projects. And we look at excellence in South African design. South African engineering company Compair has devised a way to significantly reduce the noise emitted by rock drills. Jonathan Furee reports. According to a 2013 target set up by the Department of Mineral Resources, Noise levels emitted by underground rock drills need to be reduced to 110 decibels. Comp Air Managing Director Rob Hall reports that the company has exceeded these targets with the new Bora rock drill. There, there's, two, there's two key elements to the, the new drill. The first one is the noise level, and that's where the muffler comes in in particular. The, the muffler reduces noise levels by approximately 107 decibels. So from 110 decibel rating of the previous drill down to 103 decibels on the new drill. That represents something in excess of 80% reduction to effective noise level for the human ear. So a, a massive reduction. The second benefit of the, the muffler itself is a reduction in oil consumption. So one thing it does is that the new design is it uses less oil uh, as well as retains a fair bit of the oil inside the drill. All, all drills are maintained around about every 22 shifts they come above ground to be, to be maintained and that muffler is designed to be removed off the drill. The, the oil that's, that has built up inside of it to be um, safely disposed of and then uh, put back together again and sent back underground. Second saving of the drill is, is uh, the noise level, uh, sorry is the weight level. That's down by 3 kilograms from about 26 kilograms to 23 kilograms mainly to help it on uh, operator fatigue. The reaction has been positive. We have already uh, received tentative orders based on initial um, tests, performance tests done underground. Uh, and we are working on with a number of our customers to improve it. Minova for one of them, we're working on a new roof bolter with them. Uh, which, which we expect to, uh, to get custom orders pretty soon. For years, Harmony Gold has been ploughing billions of rands into a suite of growth projects which are at last beginning to yield gold ounces. Martin Kremer has the story after the break. Harmony Gold is refusing to deviate from its target of producing 2.2 million ounces of gold a year by 2012 and says it will produce 1.6 million this year. Harmony CEO Graham Briggs. Right now we are over the hump of our capital and capital is going down. Harmony and Newcrest have had to spend more to get one mine going in Papua New Guinea than they've had to spend to get three new mines going in South Africa. Capital wise, South Africa is still a good place to develop great ore bodies and uh, Harmony's got some great ore bodies. You know, it's going to have probably five or six of the best mines in South Africa. The big story is the profitable ounces that are beginning to emerge from the growth projects. We've spent the money, we've done the infrastructure, we're developing the ore bodies, and we're actually starting to stope now, which means we're starting to get the ounces. Next quarter, the uh, capital expenditure will uh, reduce by 100 million, and um, in the March quarter, it will reduce with a further 100 million and then in the June quarter buy another further 100 million. We've got this declining capital and we also have the increasing gold ounces coming out. But weighing on South African gold miners is the strong rand and rising electricity prices. So the dollar gold price being sort of 1,050, we can expect a sort of 260 to 280,000 rand a kilogram. There's a, a mixture of assets and things that are happening in Harmony that actually put it in such a strong position. The South African Bureau of Standards is celebrating 40 years of South African design excellence. Keith Campbell reports. At its head office in Groenkloof in Pretoria, the SABS is currently running an exhibition of products designed and developed in South Africa, although sometimes manufactured overseas. SABS Design Institute manager Adrienne Villun gives us an example of how design imperatives in South Africa have changed over the years. Well, South Africa is known for high-tech medical devices, but that emphasis of first world high-tech has now moved, for instance, to primary healthcare products in the 90s. So where there's a far more concern and also uh, uh, for the safety and the well-being and the development of our developing um, uh, uh, part of the country. Some examples of recent excellent South African designs are the Zulu Mama Chair, the Ikulu and the Snoozer Baby Monitor, which won this year's SABS Chairpersons Award. Fulian explains. Uh, what is unique here 
uh, is the, the actual weaving. This is waste material, but the method of the weaving is done, and the weaving actually is also done. It's done in uh, Limpupu by ladies there. It's the empowerment uh, project there. But this chair, this very modern chair, is sold all over the world. And the whole idea is here is to, when you wash your hands, to utilize, and if you wash it for 20 seconds, it will fill um, uh, uh, the bowl and it, it cleans your toilet. So it's actually, you don't waste water. It has a, two very good um, solutions. You don't waste the water, but also it forces you to clean your hands. The uh, snooza uh, is unique. It, uh, usually a baby monitor starts to make noise when a baby stops breathing. In this case, it makes a noise which increases in intensity, but it also starts to vibrate. And this vibration on the tummy of the little baby then actually also wakens the baby. So it, it's, it's a double warning, and it actually stimulates the baby to wake up and to start breathing again. And now for a sneak preview of this week's Engineering News magazine. Read our cover story which details the commissioning process of South Africa's Sumbandila satellite. We report that work on the first new freeway to be constructed as part of the Gauteng Freeway Improvement Project could probably start in 2013. And power utility ESCOM says it has plans in place to keep the lights on during South Africa's Winter World Cup. And in Mining Weekly this week, Read our cover story on South African mining groups that are doing well in South America. Harmony Gold CEO Graham Briggs says that in the light of planned electricity price hikes, South Africa Incorporated needs to come up with an electricity tariff solution. And we report that Goldfields may build another gold mine in the Andes. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy. Engineering news, not just for engineers.